Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject is Consciousness, Part 11. From Sri Aurobindo I may say that the opening upwards, the ascent into the light, and the subsequent descent into the ordinary consciousness and normal human life is very common as the first decisive experience in the practice of yoga and may very well happen even without the practice of yoga in those who are destined for the spiritual change, especially if there is a dissatisfaction somewhere with the ordinary life and a seeking for something more, greater or better. It comes often exactly in the way that she describes and the cessation of the experience and the descent also come in the same way. This first experience may be followed by a very long time during which there is no repetition of it or any subsequent experience. If there is a constant practice of yoga, the interval need not be so long, but even so, it is often long enough. The descent is inevitable because it is not the whole being that has risen up, but only something within, and all the rest of the nature is unprepared, absorbed in or attached to ordinary life and governed by movements that are not in consonance with the light. Still, the something within is something central in the being, and therefore, the experience is in a way definitive and decisive. For it comes as a decisive intimation of the spiritual destiny and an indication of what must be reached sometime in the life. Once it has been there, something is bound to happen which will open the way determine the right knowledge and the right attitude enabling one to proceed on the way and bring a helping influence. After that, the work of clearing away the obstacles that prevent the return to the light and the ascension of the whole being and what is equally important, the descent of the light into the whole being can be begun and progress towards completion. It may take long or be rapid. That depends on the inner push and also on outer circumstances. But the inner inspiration and endeavor count more than the circumstances which can accommodate themselves to the inner need if that is very strong. The moment has come for her and the necessary aspiration and knowledge and the influence that can help her. The spine is the main channel of the descent and ascent of the force by which it connects the lower and the higher consciousness together. The sensation in the spine and on both sides of it is a sign of the awakening of the kundalini power. It is felt as a descending and an ascending current. There are two main nerve channels for the currents, one on each side of the central channel in the spine. The descending current is the energy from the above coming down to touch the sleeping power 
in the lowest nerve center at the bottom of the spine. The ascending current is the release of the energy going up from the awakened kundalini. This movement as it proceeds opens up the six centers of the subtle nervous system and by the opening one escapes from the limitations of the surface consciousness bound to the gross body and great ranges of experience proper to the subliminal self, mental, vital, subtle, physical, are shown to the sadhak. When the kundalini meets the higher consciousness as it ascends through the summit of the head, there is an opening of the higher superconscient reaches above the normal mind. It is by ascending through these in our consciousness and receiving a descent of their energies that it is possible ultimately to reach the supermind. This is the method of the Tantra. In our yoga, it is not necessary to go through the systematized method. It takes place spontaneously according to the need by the force of the aspiration. As soon as there is an opening, the divine power descends and conducts the necessary working, does what is needed, each thing in its time, and the yogic consciousness begins to be born in the sadhak.